In this video, I'm going to reveal my secrets for responsive design in Adobe Captivate 9. Okay, let's get started here. So, I'm opening up my Create Your Own Interaction 2016 edition um, to file here, and uh, I'm just going to go over a couple of things with responsive design. I've had conversations with other instructional designers as well as uh, you know uh, newcomers to uh, to Captivate uh, asking me questions about this as well. And you know the the common I think the common belief is that because something like Adobe Captivate 9 uses five different breakpoints, that the assumption is is that designing for responsive design requires five times as much time. And I think a lot of instructional designers, uh, e-learning instructional designers uh, and developers are avoiding responsive design uh, for this very reason. And I'm hopefully today going to convince you that it isn't necessary. You can actually do some things fairly quickly to, uh, to make sure that responsive design works for you. One of the things right off the bat I want to start off by saying is that with Adobe Captivate 9, you need to start working within the desktop or the widest possible breakpoint uh, and then work your way down. That's definitely tip number one. Um, the other thing too is to stop thinking in terms of pixels and start thinking in terms of percentages, right? So like when you're dealing with this desktop view, you know, it's uh, 627 pixels tall by 1024 pixels wide. And so when you think about placements, uh, placement of objects on the screen, you're thinking, well, how many pixels does that take up? Or, uh, you know, where is that located? How many pixels from the left and how many pixels from the top? is that located and I think if you get past that and start thinking in terms of percentage things become easier so think of it this way if um, the width of my view here my breakpoint is 100 percent right because from here to here or vice versa is a hundred percent start thinking about the objects on screen as taking up a certain percentage of that area so with this knowledge check, for example, um, you know, you can think in terms of percentage. So let's look at all the various objects that are on this particular slide. And if you look at it from the position tab, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. So this is set up for auto height. I actually try to avoid use auto height because I want it to be a very specific percentage. So switch your object height and width to percentage. So this is approximately 94% and it's 10% tall. If you maintain that across all the different breakpoints, it will always be 10%. Now it might get smaller for the smaller size screens, but the end result is that it will only take up 10% of your screen. In other words, also leaving 90% of your space for other objects. So that way you can pretty much guarantee that everything's going to fit. The other thing that I think is important to look at is the anchor points for your objects. Um, what I do is make sure that smart position is turned on. Uh, this is a really useful tool. Let me take this Ottawa button here as an example. So with smart position on, I can see that this is this object here, and I'm just going to change that height to be a certain percentage. And we'll do the same thing for all of these. And I'll just show you why that works so well. So I have these four buttons on screen. Um, not so important for desktop view, but certainly as you get to the smaller mobile and tablet size views, uh, having as large a button as you possibly can get away with is important. So let's say, for example, um, I know that the width of this is 100%, and I know that there's a certain percentage here, let's say, um, about 5% is used up by the outside space here. So this is, let's say, approximately 95% here. And um, let's say I want this to be 40% of the width. So 
I change that there. Uh, and I can do the same thing for each of these buttons. Let's do that right off the bat. We'll make this 40% each. Now they overlap right now, but that's okay. Um, now I have clearly extra room down here that I could take advantage of. So let's maybe position this one right here. Now, of course, here's the catch. I am 62% from the top and I'm 56% from the left. It actually makes more sense if you're going to use, uh, put an object in the lower uh, right hand bottom section of your slide that your anchor points should probably be the right hand side of the page and the bottom there. So if I was to do that, let's hold off on that for now. Let's just deal with the, the width and the height. So these are 40%. Let's say, um, let's say we want to make them 20% high. And I'm just going to move that up to a position here. And let's make these the same size. So I can still use my alignment uh, controls for this. And we'll just uh, have this position. I'm just eyeballing it at this point here, but let's say around there looks good. And we can be more precise in, in a moment here. We'll just guarantee that that's sort of nice location there. So we have our four buttons here for this knowledge check. I'm 8% from the left. Let's see what I am from the right here. 7.4. So let's make that 8%. Let's just do the same thing for this one here. 8%. So that's roughly centered. And again, the 20% height will be fine. But I'm going to change what these buttons are anchored to. So in this case here, I actually want to make sure that the button is always below the text above and the text above is always below the subtitle and the subtitle is always below the top here. So let's first of all make sure that we have a fixed percentage for height and width for all of our objects here. I'm going to change that to percentage and percentage that's fine here and let's make sure these are all percentage. It's really important that you do this. That's fine. So now what happens, there's a couple things you can do. If you right click on the object and apply position properties to all views, that's going to ensure that everything trickles down from that desktop view. Unfortunately, you cannot select all your objects and do this. And if someone from Adobe is watching, uh, that would be a great upgrade in, in Captivate 10 is the ability to select all my objects and apply position properties to all different views. So that would be useful in this case here. So, uh, and I'm going to do this again in a second here because I just want to illustrate that that can be done. So I'm going to change the way this works a little bit here. So here's my, my title. And um, it has anchor points and it's fine for the top leftmost uh, object on your slide. But the knowledge check here, we want to make sure that that is always going to be below this title. So using these anchor points, I've decided to call them anchor points. Some people call them top hats. Um, some people call them other things, but I'm going to use them as anchor points. So I'm anchoring this box to be below this box here and the left hand side is fine there at four percent now below the subtitle is the stem of the question the question itself and I'm going to make sure that that is always below this object above it by anchoring it to that and of course it's going to always be one percent below the subtitle again 4% from the left is right, but you could also actually anchor the left hand side to your subtitle. And why is that a good thing? Well, let me show you. If I move the subtitle, let's say I move it from the 5% left hand side of the page that it is, it's going to actually pull the other objects that are anchored to it this way in the same fashion. So that's actually a useful little hint. And I'm going to apply the same thing to my buttons here. 
So I take the Toronto button and I'm going to anchor it to the text above. That's the first thing. So you can see that the anchor is attached to that. And I'm going to anchor the left hand edge of the button to the text above as well. Right, so that th that will always be 2% below that, and this will be 2% away from the left hand edge of this. Now, what I can do with these buttons that's really cool is I can do the same thing. I can anchor the Vancouver button to the Toronto button so that it's always going to be 3% away. And same thing with the top there. We're going to anchor it, we can anchor it to the stem. But better yet, we can anchor it to the top of the left button. And we'll do the same for all of these. So again, I'll anchor the Ottawa button to the Vancouver. And this to the Montreal button. And do the same thing for the Montreal button. And we're going to anchor the left-hand side of it to the Toronto left-hand side. Now, why is that good? Well, let me select the Toronto button and choose a new location for it. So I'm going to just move it to the left here. Ah, you see all four of my buttons are moving at the same time. So I can ensure that the size or the location of all these buttons will always remain relative to one another. Let's try playing with the width a bit. I'm just going to try and maximize the width of these buttons there you see what's happening because they're connected like that so 43 percent seems to be that magic number that works for this again i can make sure that these same values are shared with all the different breakpoints by right clicking all of the objects and apply the position properties to all views this just takes a little bit of time here and I'll show you what the advantage of this is from a responsive design perspective. Again, if you've ever experienced responsive design without having to use these sorts of controls, you find that as soon as you look at another breakpoint, you pretty much have to redesign it. Watch what happens now when I select the different breakpoints for this slide. Fits perfectly fits perfectly, fits, well, pretty close to perfectly. But you can see that one is definitely based on the other and I am definitely using up the maximum amount of space here. So I really don't have to spend five times as long designing this slide. You know, there's a few tweaks that I might need to do, but for the most part, I don't really have to do much to change these objects. The other thing that you can do is if you want, you know, if you've ever experienced this where you've made a change to the text on one breakpoint and then gone to look at a different breakpoint, suddenly the text is old text or maybe the formatting like the bold and the um, italics and underlines and the bulleting doesn't transfer across the breakpoints. You can select all of your text related objects on the slide and right click and apply text to all views or apply text and the text properties and text properties includes things like font style and so forth bold italic all that stuff and if I select that and just wait a moment here that will go across all the different views now it's also going to choose the font size for you so you may need to go in and adjust the font size for certain views, certainly the uh, the mobile views, and then you simply go down to properties, and you can adjust those one by one, just to make sure it fits on your screen. Because of course you don't want it to spill over. Just make a few changes to the font size so that it fits, and we'll take our boxes here. That's fine. And you can do the same thing for this. So obviously this text would need to be adjusted. Bring that down to say 14. Knowledge check is probably okay, but let's lower it anyway so it's not so huge. Create your own what? Nothing there. We'll just lower that again. So 
I don't personally believe that responsive design takes five times as long. I'm not talking about a really complicated screen here, but again, um, all of these objects are placed on the screen in relation to one another in a perspective of percentage. And the same thing can be applied to even objects like this here. So this is the view for desktop, and I've got a combination of images and captions and titles and various buttons as well. And um, it's very straightforward. All you really need to do is apply those same principles. So um, again, if I have an object like this, and of course we're dealing with multi-state views at this point, but the same thing still applies. The same positioning rules still apply in a multi-state object. So I have this character here, perhaps, um, you know, anchoring her to the left-hand side of the page isn't appropriate. In fact, in this case, we might want to anchor her to the image that's on the screen here. And that's a little trickier to do when you've got a, a multi-state object like this, because the image is actually based on her. So, Maybe what we want to do is anchor the image to the left-hand side of her, so minus 14%, and we'll say, in this case, the bottom part of the image will be anchored to the bottom part of her image, so that as we go to the different views, the two will always be lined up together regardless of where they appear on the screen. So that's a great way to go. The caption can also be anchored to her as well, since she's the main image of this multi-object, multi-state view. And perhaps the caption should be anchored to the picture as well at the top here, so we'll say that. And of course, you can adjust all these sizes. So 8% from the top, um, you maybe you wanna just make that a little lower, whatever is appropriate. And again, the same thing here. So again, this now fits nicely across all the different views there. As you can see, it lines up perfectly, and that works fine as well. And you would make the appropriate adjustments for each of your multi-state objects. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful for you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.